It's Champions League quarter-final time. At home in the first leg again against Paris Saint-Germain this time around. Of course, we beat Bayern Munich to get to this stage in yesterday's episode. We start with PSG and I hope that we'll have semi-finals to play in today's episode as well. I'll show you the other results thus far in the Champions League quarter-finals. Napoli 1, Atletico Madrid 0 and Milan 2, Barcelona two so Napoli won at Atletico Madrid and Milan have two away goals against Barcelona we'll now go and place P uh, go and face PSG and then Liverpool will play Real Madrid the weakest side in the group or in the group in the tournament remaining is probably Napoli outside of that every side could quite possibly beat us and beat us well Liverpool we probably have we feel more comfortable against because of our Ability or performances against them in recent times, but still, they're a very good side. We have got our new signings in, of course, right now, and they played very well in yesterday's episode. We just need to focus on playing well, and I'm sure we'll be fine. I don't know what PSG's team is going to look like at this stage. Obviously, they don't have Neymar anymore. He's at Manchester City. I think Marquinhos is still there, but I'm not sure. We'll just wait and see in due course what the state of their 11 is. But that's my starting 11 for this um, for this first leg. And we look pretty damn strong indeed as well. I do have options on the bench too. We're also into the semi-finals of the FA Cup and still going well in the Premier League too. So on course for the quadruple. Let's see if we can't get one step closer or even two steps closer in today's episode with quarterfinals and semis, I hope. Right then, PSC, what we got? Alphonse Ariola in goal. Audrey Zola there as well. Kylian Mbappe still here and starting. Christ knows how high rated he is right now. Depay up top as well. It's a 4 2 4. Very attacking. Chiesa and Asensio. Draxler in the midfield. Skriniar and Sula at the back. I'm very curious to see the ratings of some of their players. I reckon they're going to be unbelievable. Ariola is 85. Odrizola, we're not sore. 90 rated Sula and Skriniar. Jesus. Uh, Bruno Fernandes it is. That was the Fernandes in their midfield. So Draxler and Bruno Fernandes, neither of them have any real defensive uh, intelligence. So they're kind of playing a 4 0 6. They might be quite open defensively. Chiesa's 86. Mbappe's 95 rated. Oh, God. Uh, Memphis Depay, we're not sure, and Asensio's 86. Jesus Christ, how are you supposed to keep a 95-rated Kylian Mbappe quiet for 180 minutes? I'm not entirely too sure. We shall give it a go. Hakimi to Usman Dembele. Tried to squeeze it through that gap to Renato. Not able to find him. I have a feeling I might have to be quite patient building up in this game. Not only have they got a really strong attack, but their defence with two 90-rated centre-backs back there is going to be particularly difficult to break through. Ty Roberts, however, has broken through. Just needs to find a teammate, and he's found Renato. Oh, who's finished beautifully on his left foot. Renato Santos shrugging off all of his teammates. He wants his moment in the spotlight, and he deserves it with a finish like that. That was insane. I didn't think it was going to go in. I was just trying to force the corner, in all honesty. But Renato Sensei has buried it. Tyler Roberts in behind. Literally, as soon as I start talking about how difficult their defence is going to be to break down. And to be fair, there's a lot of blue shirts in the way there. And he's found that one that one avenue between those two defenders, Sula and Audrey Zola, to find that far corner. That's a great goal. We led early doors against Bayern and ran out 4-0 winners in that first leg. And we're 1-0 up early doors here as well. I doubt we'll get a similar end result, though. Asensio. Now hits a Ruggion. Reg Reguilon, apparently, is how Derek Ray pronounced that. Reguilon. Okay, I'll have to remember that. Renato around the corner to Barela. They've got no midfield, as we didn't think they would do. We've been walking around Draxler and Bruno Fernandes oof, all game long so far. It's so easy to counter on PSG because the, the front four are obviously forward. And the midfield two are pushing for the forward two. So whenever I get the ball in my defensive third, I can just go straight to my attacking third without too much problem. It's then getting past the rest of the defenders that's going to be the issue. But 
PSG might have to hold on to possession quite a bit. But you can see how they're pushing and pressing on possession loss as well, which is only going to draw their midfield even further out of possession, or out of position even. Again, the words possession of position uh, mixed up when saying them quite a few times in a sentence. But straight away, look, I'm in behind their midfield already and at their back line. And Renato Sanchez has loads of space to feed Usman Dembele, who scored, oh, such a heavy touch, who scored the goal against Bayern, but hasn't been able to set up or score a second against PSG here. Just needed a little bit more control from that touch. I did ask for a heavy touch to break into the space. I just didn't envisage it being that heavy. Barela to Tyler Roberts, caught in possession, and Asensio has it back, and Reguilo will return the ball back to his defensive line and they'll build again here PSG. No chances on goal for them yet and they've not been that good in possession but Memphis Depay holds off my defender well enough there. Just trying to make sure we mark the run of Mbappe obviously their danger man in this first leg. Dembele into Orlan and Renato Sanchez is pushing forward again. Dembele drifted central so not an option at the minute but Orlan is in there and Tyler Roberts if I can time the pass we could slot him in and look for Renato again, but Skriniar steps in nicely. Five minutes till half time in leg number one of quarterfinal. Number one. Renato to Dembele. Forward there to Roberts. Dembele again. Good touch to get past the left back. Renato to Tyler Roberts. I'm going to come back central. We have dominated possession. At least it feels like we've dominated possession. Or oh, tried something a little bit fancy there just to send the defender the wrong way. But in misdirection, they didn't really work. Militao's done really well to win that header. That wasn't meant for Dembele. It was meant for Tyler Roberts. But never mind. We shall lead at half-time by a goal to nil. And be relatively comfortable with that lead. PSG not really been too amazing going forward to this point. And are yet to have a shot. Although we've only had two ourselves. A lot of the play in the midfield at the minute. Mainly them attacking, me winning it back in my defensive third before they have a shot and then countering on them and then then going back up the other way. It's not staying in the middle third, it's going from one end of the pitch to the other without goal scoring opportunities being created. Both defences on top in that first half, but we were able to squeeze one goal in. And I hope that they won't be able to do the same in this second half. Stefan Engel played a big part in us getting through against Bayern, as well as obviously us scoring a lot of goals. And so far we haven't had to rely on him. But when they do start to create chances, PSG, I am going to need to lean on my German world-class goalkeeper. Adria Zola oh, gets past the challenge of Malassia, but not past the challenge of Ben White. Through that gap there to Nicolo Barela. Here's Tyler Roberts. All in. Dembele looking for the run of Marlon who's found really well. It was only... Oh, that's going to be a foul. It was only 1-0 at half-time in the first leg against Bayern 2. So let's not think that this game isn't able to be won by a similar margin. Like the two Barela to Malassia. It's just not enough space at the minute. Oh, but Orlan's turned by right foot. Comfortable enough with a goalkeeper straight at him, really. And weakened shot on Orlan's right foot. Good header by Barela though, and we'll get the ball back forward, hopefully. Look at them press, look. The way they do that when losing possession is not the right way to go about things. And Nicolas Sula might have just killed his team off. And we have made them pay for that mistake. Too aggressive, Paris Saint-Germain. Too aggressive. Nicolas Sula inexplicably threw himself into that challenge. Tyler Roberts was always going to take a touch and either step away from him or spin one way or the other. There's no way he was going to try and turn on the sixpence and you were going to be able to go through and win the ball there, Nicholas. Awful defending, and Tyler Roberts will make you pay for that. Oh, I only just missed the hand of Areola, though. 2-0, and the gap widening just past the hour mark. There's Chiesa. Lifts it up. Audrey Zola popping it up off the turf as well. Drax, the doing the same. But what is going on right now? <laughs> They just keep dinking the ball up. You need to actually attack, lads. Not just start throwing all the skills about. Not that it was that skillful in the first place. Doing one keepy up and then playing a pass. Audrey Zola's run straight into Malassia there. He's done well to hold the Spaniard off. And a counter-attack is on. And there is no one back for Paris Saint-Germain. This could be game and tie over again. Renato settles himself and can't finish. Perhaps I should have gone for the near post. OP effort, but I tried to go across goal and not kind of cheat the system. 
Renato knocked that down. It's fallen to Malasia. I tried to aim it to Tyler Roberts. Renato finds Tyler Roberts. And into the middle. And the referee's put it to the spot. There was Niklas Söller again making a mistake. There was a foul or advantage played for something on the edge of the box. I think that was outside. And I think as I played the ball across there, with Tyler Roberts across the face of goal, yes, Sula's gone in again and fouled Tyler Roberts. And Sula could have single-handedly knocked his team out of the Champions League hit. Leeds 3, PSG 0. His teammates know where to point the fingers. They have their scapegoat, scapegoat Paris Saint-Germain. It's not like I've played particularly well. But Niklas Söller is single-handedly gifting us a place in the Champions League semi-finals here. Sensio inside to Bruno Fernandes. Reguilon. Nice interception by Dembele. Oh, God. Poor from Dembele there, though. And Renato Sanchez trying to win it off Rafinha. Here's Chiesa. Mbappe went to ground. I don't know whether that was because he had a push or whether that was what he thought was the best technique to try and get the shot away ahead of the defender, but he's miss missed the ball entirely. They are yet, I think, to draw a save out of Stefan Engel in this game. Oh, my passing has really been suspect in this past 10-minute period in the game. Mbappe around the corner to Federico Chiesa. He's turned inside well. Manassi can't stick with him. Draxler has options. One of those options is to go backwards to Bruno Fernandes. I thought he was going to go forwards. They've got a lot of men forward here, PSG. And, oh, can't get it off him there with Militao. Bruno Fernandes can't get past Hakimi and Renato Sanchez will counter. Look how tight they are in the middle there as well. I don't understand their tactical outlook here, PSG. It's just not been the way that they should have done it. And Sula has been done again and we are going to win the full nil scoreline again. Win by the 4 nil scoreline again that we got against Bayern in the round of 16. Renato with a lovely spin on the spot there. And he has his second goal of the game. Sanchez 9 and 90. That is us probably through, almost certainly through to the semi-finals. There will be some that accuse of me changing the difficulty settings because obviously we struggled in the group stage and last year in the Champions League we struggled in the group stage but these knockout games have been played on exactly the same difficulty with exactly the same sliders I just can't tell you why it's going the way it is Daniel Marlon continuing his hot run of form and Renato Sanchez was impressive as ever but we will now sim to be fair the second leg and then we can play both semi-finals in today's episode. Well, we've got to play both semi-finals in today's episode as well. But there's no point playing a game if I don't have to, is there? And we can certainly sim the one, the second leg. Right, let's get through this against Southampton. Hopefully get another set of three points to send us further clear at the top of the league. At least I think we're clear at the top of the league. City did draw with us and then we lost to Liverpool in a simulated game as well yesterday. We are still top by three points, although City have a game in hand and can draw level with us. So actually, the Premier League title looks like it's going to go down to the wire as well. Uh, stay grounded, Jaden, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Right. Quarter-final, second leg against Paris Saint-Germain. I will go to the press conference just to boost morale, but I will sim this one, and then we'll see who will get in the semi-finals. Paris Saint-Germain, we're clear favourites. They deserve respect, though. Let's not underestimate them. Let's see what we can do in this simulator game and get ourselves through comfortably, I hope, to the semi-finals. 3-0 they won the second leg against Leverkusen. Well done, Erling. Get yourself booked after a minute. Do not get yourself sent off. Paqueta gives Real Madrid a 1-0 lead against Liverpool in their second leg. Not sure what the first leg scoreline was there. Depay gives PSG a 1-0 lead. Asensio makes it 2. Starting to have the heart flutter a little bit. Roberts makes it 2-1. That crucial away goal just to ease the nerves. Thank you, Tyler. We are through to the semi-finals. It wasn't ever really in doubt, but I, <laughs> I did question it a little bit when they scored two quick goals either side of half-time, but pleased enough that we've been able to get through and we've Napoli 
in the semi-finals of the Champions League. So we shall go to those games now. I'll see my way through these next ones. No point really showing you them for no apparent reason. Let me just make sure I... So first team, second team. No, second team here, first team. Second team there, first team. Okay, just to make sure we have the right team available for the games in the Champions League. We'll prioritise that competition, obviously. And hopefully still get results in the league, which we certainly will against Arsenal because they've still got a 71-rated goalkeeper. Heading into the game against Napoli, unfortunately, in one of those simmed games, Daniel Marlon is out injured for six weeks. However, the good news is that Alan San Maximat is on his way back from injury, so uh, we don't have to worry too much about... Actually, I will just throw San Maximat in, why not? We don't have to worry too much about the fact that uh, Marlon's injured because one injured player comes back as one injured player goes out of the starting 11. We'll, uh, we'll chase his keep. Nothing personal. Well, yeah, no, Molassi's going to play in this game, so none of those are give me the opportunity to say, yes, Molassi will play. Uh, we're confident, though. No idea how he got this far. Uh, I don't care. Let's say they did rather well. I don't want to be too harsh on them. Napoli are a half-decent side. What was the scoreline, though, in the uh, quarterfinals? Who was it that they had? I can't recall, actually. Oh, Atleti, and they won by two goals to one. So they had that away goal, but they didn't need it in the end. Barcelona are through against Milan, so they're out, thankfully. And Real Madrid beat Liverpool. So we will face, oh, if we beat Napoli, in tomorrow's Champions League final, either Barcelona or Real Madrid. And after a 2-0 win at the Camp Nou in El Clasico number one, it looks like Barcelona are taking a strong favourites tag to the Santiago Bernabeu. But let's not mess about away from home against Napoli in the first leg. Let's make sure we start strong again, as we have done in both previous knockout rounds. Napoli's 11, Alex Merritt in goal. Phil Foden and Wilfred Zaha in their forward lines. They've an ageing Kumin Son on the bench and Lorenzo Insigne as well. James on the left, Foden and Zaha with Esposito in the middle. Chutino and Jota up top. That's Diego Jota of Wolves. Titino, the player they signed from Liverpool in this save. Again, I'm curious to see the ratings of players like um, Merritt and... Uh, oh, my brain is just completely blanked. Uh, Zaha, etc. We're going to be able to see Will Zaha? No. Phil Foden's 89. Daniel James is 85. Diogo Jota, 86. 89 rated Phil Foden. Wow. Well, Napoli on paper, should be easier to beat than Bayern and PSG. But it did take PSG making multiple defensive mistakes and setting up incorrectly, tactically, that led to us having such a strong first leg. I have a feeling that Napoli, as traditionally a weaker side in FIFA terms... Oh my God, the reactions... They've scored anyway. This is going to be the game or the tie that could mess us up. Whenever you play, it's just another case of the very top teams don't play like they should and the teams just below and under that play like the top teams. I don't know how Engel has even come close to saving the first effort. That reaction stop is unreal. But Dan James gets there with a second header and... They have themselves a 1-0 lead after six minutes. We did to Bayern and PSG what they've just done to me. I don't want to lose this game by four goals to nil. Let's try and ensure that that doesn't happen, shall we? Roberts into Sanchez. Dembele's on the run. Orlan has made a run across the line rather than in between the lines. Tyler Roberts, oh, that was, wasn't meant for... He was meant for Renato Sanchez. Now I can get it to Renato Sanchez. Oh, and the defender was overcommitted again, just as Nicolas Sula did against us in the last game. And we have an away goal. And it's Renato Sanchez again. The defender, they're just too aggressive. Look at him try and step in. You can't do that. And Renato will bury it. 1-1. One, one. You can't say. Oh, oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> So very lucky for Napoli, and if they punish me for that accidental deflection, I'll be furious. Foden, that's going to be a pen, isn't it? 
I think it might well should have been a penalty. Engel denies them the second effort, but should Phil Foden have been given a pen for that? I certainly got, got one for something probably less egregious in the Bayern game. But the referee decides that that isn't a penalty and Napoli don't have the chance from the spot to make it. Why would you... Oh, Jesus Christ, Stefan, it's not the first time you've done that, is it? Just throw it to the man. It's not hard. Christ alive. Diogo Zota, back to Exposito, to Phil Foden, all nicely round the corner and into Tadino and a big save from Engel again. I think Napoli should have had a pen there and I think you guys would agree. Phil Foden to deliver. They won't use the short man. Looped high. The keeper will come and tip away. How has he gotten to that? I want to see a replay, please. Last I looked, he was still on the floor. He's up and the volley comes in. And between a number of men, he's able to get a full double hand to it. Stefan Engel is single-handedly keeping us in this game. That and the referee not giving penalties. Corner again for Napoli. It's 1-1 still. Technically has us in the lead, so to speak. Away by Sam Maximan, but only as far as Dan James again. And his pace is going to be scary. As is Zaha's. Zaha again to Dan James again. Gimme. Don't give a pen. I got the ball that time. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Engel holds on. Christ alive, this is getting tense at the back, isn't it? And Napoli have pressed, but thankfully we've been able to ride the pressure and see it out. One, two, right, off we go. Counter-attack, my turn to get forward now, thank you very much. Ashraf Hakimi down the right-hand side. Nia Karte can't catch him. Oh, but Viejo gets the header away. Now here they come on the counter. This is the sort of game, the sort of difficulty of game I expected from the previous knockout rounds in the Champions League. Finally, the knockout stages of this competition are offering a bit of a test. Because, oh, that was awful. Because the first... Two rounds of the knockout stages haven't been a test at all, but this is difficult against Napoli, and I am struggling to keep them out here. Exposito, again, in possession in the midfield, down the line to Zaha. Early in, Militao wins the initial header, Exposito in again. Hakimi and Ben White between them get rid of that, but Titino reaches the loose ball. Foden, round to Dan James, Militao and away. I'll be quite happy to see this half out at 1-1, to be honest. Those half-time stats show exactly why this has been so difficult. Getting battered by Napoli in this game. I expected, oh, we mentioned every round of the knockout stages to be like this. To be like the games against AC Milan last season. And they haven't been against PSG and Bayern Munich. But Napoli, who are not even arguably the weakest team. They are the weakest team of even from the quarterfinals moving forward, let alone the semi-finals. They are the weakest team left in the competition, but they're the ones that are battering me. The keepers come for that, and Mere narrows the angle down well enough so that we can't find a way through. Dembele trying to find a way through of his own. Orlan spun brilliantly. Bury that, please. Alex Mere is doing what Stefan Engel did to our other opposition in earlier rounds, keeping his team in it by making stop after stop. So Maximan will close that down. It's going to take a big second half and or second leg performance from us. Oh, is that a foul? It is. It's going to take a big second half and second leg performance from us to get ourselves through to the final for tomorrow. But do I try the training ground regime again? No. San Maximo is under too much pressure there. Now, who can take a free kick? It's going to have to be Renato Sanchez here. Can we get it down and under the bar again? That's the question. Oh, no. What? It just took the free kick for me. Come on. I was in the process of trying to figure out where I wanted to put it. For crying out loud. It takes. It's so sensitive and so hard to get it to sit where you want. It takes that long to sort out the accuracy. Because it goes from this far inside the post to that far outside the post. And it's so hard to get it to go in between. For crying out loud. Give me a break game. I have a free kick in a brilliant position. And you've screwed me over. 1-1, one, one, 10 minutes into the second half. I probably wouldn't have scored the free kick, but at least give me a fair chance of doing so. It's not like we're online and the game needs to go on and I'm trying to time waste against an online opponent. Give me a chance to figure my 
angles out. Dan James looking to get in behind Hakimi here. And let's be honest, he has the pace to do it too. But we've won it back. And around the corner to Usman Dembele. Now this could be the chance we need. Orlan has positioned himself brilliantly and Usman Dembele cannot find the pass I needed. It was an awful attempt from him. Into Orlan. Looking for Tyler Roberts, who's in and scores! A 2-1 lead and a second away goal. That might be the goal that sends us through to the semi-finals, but there's still a long way to go. Who's like? Back to Zaha. I've made a couple of changes. Sam Maxima has gone off, as has Usman Dembele. Both were struggling for stamina. On have come Oscar Melendo and... I can't actually remember who I brought on on the left. Who did I bring on on the left? We'll find out soon enough. Melendo forward to Tyler Roberts, trying to get away from the man that's with him. Other defenders come across to help out. Jaden Sancho is who I brought on on the left-hand side. So I've had to freshen up my attack to try and get a third away goal. If we can get a third away goal, I'll be more confident of us going through. Just 2-1 is not a scoreline. I'm comfortable with, even with the away goal rule, the way Napoli have played in this game, I would not be confident of getting through in a second leg with just a one goal margin. A two goal margin with three goals being away goals, I'd be more comfortable. I could see us winning this one 3-1 and then losing the home leg 2-0. I see Renato. Can we get that third? Yes! It's 3-1! Well then, there's the third away goal I was talking about. <laughs> Didn't expect it to come that quickly. 3-1, Renato Sanchez at it again. And that, hopefully, will be us confirmed through to the final. But we'll have to wait and see how the second leg goes. We're even the remaining 10 minutes here. But I hope we can now keep Napoli out. I'll make one more change. Let's bring Rafael Varane on for Ben White. Strengthen defensively. After strengthening offensively, that worked. Now I need the other end of the field to go as well, please. We've been much better in this second half than we were in the first. We only had one shot in the first half. And obviously we've had two, at least two in uh, this half because uh, we've scored two more goals. Renato Sanchez to Melendo. Through to Ma uh, Orlan. I said Marlon there. Is that a foul? No, you've got to be stronger than that then, Erling. Come on, mate. That was awful. Niacate, back to Viejo. Oh, I've given away though. More defensive mistakes. Is that going to cost them? No, they've defended it well enough. It was Sula's defensive mistakes against PSG that saw us through against them. Napoli have been pretty solid defensively. But that one lack of marking with Renato. Oh, he's missed the target. The one lack of marking with Renato has cost them. I took the 10 minutes to... Uh, for Varane to find the field. Barbeck has come on for Tatino, but I think it's not going to be enough time left for him to have any form of impact whatsoever. I'm just going to see the game out here. It's going to be 3 1 to Leeds United after a very shaky start. We're going to get a good win away from home, but I am still nervous about the second leg. Time to welcome the Neapolitans to Leeds. Their starting lineup looks very similar, although it said Franco then. I don't remember Franco playing the last game. He might well have done. Via Hussai Niakase. The rest of the team is the same. I'm just not sure about Franco. I can't recall who played at centre back alongside Jesus Viejo. But we have, in the end, actually, what turned out to be a very decent first leg result. Was really worried when they scored the first goal after just a few minutes. And we obviously only had one shot in the entirety of the first half, but we've come away from the first leg with a good result in the end. There were still four goals in it. It's just that not all four were scored by us on this occasion in the first leg. Napoli looking to start as positively as they did in the last leg. And Phil Foden could find a teammate. There's a man free on the far side, but thankfully Ben White has stepped in and they won't find him. Renato to Varela. Sam Maximat is begging for it, but I can't find the right pass. <sighs> I'm nervous in this game, but those three away goals will really help. If it had been 
3-1 in this home leg to go into a second leg with Napoli having just a two-goal deficit and one away goal in their favour. I'd be even more nervous, but having those three away goals be in our favour. Is he on site here, Dan James? He is. Having it be the other way around and having played the away leg first this time, having the worst scoreline or not as good a scoreline as the first two knockout stages isn't going to be as difficult or as troubling an issue. Thankfully, we're in a great position. And if we can start this game with a goal in the opening first half, then I'd, that would really put my nerves at ease. And I'd say we would definitely go through to the final. But as Diogo Jota gets played straight through, I'm not sure. As Diogo Jota scores to make it Napoli 1-0 on the night and 3-2 on Origa, I'm still not sure. Barela through the gap to Renato. Orlan's with me. I'll go to San Maximan if I can. Is that a foul? I mean, Orlan clearly feels it is. Shouting at the referee. Zaha trying to create something for Napoli before the end of the half. Lifts it down the line. Is Tatino going to get there? Well, Militao does well the first time and well the second time to defend it. He shouldn't have had to do it the second time, but never mind. We'll switch this. And there is a bit of space for Dembele. But not too much to run into. Not too much time left either. That was just a touch from Tyler Roberts who took it around the man. And we're going to go in at half time. 1-0 down here against Napoli. But still, crucially, 3-2 up on aggregate. And even if they score another, it's the only shot of the game. Even if they score another and make it 3-3 on aggregate, we'll still go through on away goals. I'm going to bring Jared Bowen on at half-time for Dembele. I'm going to need fresh legs as soon as possible. Jamie Shackleton can come on for Tyler Roberts as well. And it probably won't be too long before I bring on Tyler Adams as well. I might just try and hold on to what we've got rather than go out of my way to force another goal for us. I might sit on the three away goals we have and pray that they're enough. Down the line to Zaha. It's through the legs of San Maximan Militao. Can you win that, please? He's trying his hardest. It wouldn't be changed player. Ben White clears the header. Esposito falls to him. Totino turns and finds Diogo Zota, who's back to Totino Engel in the way. Had to get it past a couple of defenders before it even reached the keeper, but still found the angle for the shot. James will take the corner, and it's looped towards the near post, away by Bowen, and Barella on the counter. Now will be a wonderful time to score a goal, and Jamie Shackleton will be a wonderful person to score it, but it's not going to outpace Wilfred Zaha, is he? Nicolò Barella, they've got men back now. Orlando, oh, touch, lets him down, Erling. Need you to be better than that, mate, in situations like that. I could do with your hold-up play being better. I need your hold-up play being better. Husay into Tatino. Back to Husay again. Wilfred Zaha into Tatino. God, this is so tense. The game's hanging on a knife edge right now. Daniel James into the middle and away by Engel. So Maxi Man to Shackleton. Renato Sanchez to Shackleton again. Space for Bowen. Not masses of it, but enough to work with. Jamie. It's good movement, actually, from Shackleton there to play the pass and then back away. And Shackleton's in! And Shackleton scores in the Champions League again! That should be us into the Champions League final. Oh, we asked the question in the title. Can we get to the Champions League final? Will we make it? The answer... At this stage, is a probable yes. But it will be Real Madrid or Barcelona will face in that final tomorrow. If we make it. If they score another two, Napoli, we will be going to extra time. Unas driving inside. Just come on for Zaha. Switching it quickly to Dan James. Oh, who shows great agility and balance to get past the challenge of Hakimi. Foden will knock that back to Niakate. And James will try again. Niakate. Crosses from deep. Militao heads away. We'll reach that there with Shackleton. It's just going to be a case of holding on now, I think, for the next 20 minutes. 
Just keep possession and see the game out. And if Napoli make defensive mistakes, like letting Jared Bowen get in behind like that, then we can punish them yet further. But I don't think we're going to need to. I got so lucky there. And even luckier, because the referee's gifted me a pen. Uh, what are you doing, ref? Nyakate is just stood there. Oh, no, he's tucked the shirt. I couldn't see it from the camera angle. Well spotted, ref. Well spotted indeed. Let's give Jared Bowen the chance to do it from the spot then, considering he earned the kick. Oh, and the keeper's got down and saved it. A corner only. If that costs us our place in the final, then I can't look any further than myself, can I? But I'm pretty sure that it won't. Oh, I thought Bowen was going to score anyway. Oh. To the Jota. James. Nicely done. All out. Oh, it's a lovely ball. And Shackleton's in again. Oh, can he finish this, says Derek Ray, as if setting it up for Jamie Shackleton to send us into the Champions League final. <laughs> He's like, that's how I feel inside right now as well, Jamie. Brilliant ball by all out. And to be fair, I tried to shoot here, but he took an extra touch. Actually, it didn't affect the taking of the opportunity. Shackleton with his second goal of the game. And we're 2-1 up on the night and 5-2 up on aggregate. Napoli have not made this easy, though. And that aggregate scoreline does not do them justice at all. They have been so difficult to play against. And we could yet make it more. It really is unfair on them because it's been one of the hardest teams I've played against all, all save. Not quite as hard as AC Milan, but... Certainly difficult. Barella's cut that out nicely. Sam Maximat across here to Jared Bowen. I'll try and use the fresh legs to work inside. I did get so very lucky with that penalty though, didn't I? All out. Oh. And that could have made it even more one-sided, but unfortunately we missed it. So we're not going to replicate the scoreline from the first leg, but we are going to replicate the result from the first leg and from... The quarterfinals and from the round of 16, it's Leeds United who are going to advance. But who will we face in tomorrow's final? Will it be Barcelona? Will it be Real Madrid? You couldn't really ask for a more glamorous opponent for a Champions League final, could you? For the final episode of the entire save, it will be two of, or one of, two of the biggest sides in world football, if not one of the two biggest sides in world football. I'm sure Manchester United would have something to say about that. But I feel that Real Madrid and Barcelona are the two biggest teams in world football, but we could become the best team in European football history aside if we can win the Champions League final tomorrow. We only had one extra chance than Napoli in that game. And in the end, only won it by uh, two extra goals on aggregate. But we're not sure yet which it will be. It looks like it's going to be Barcelona. But time will tell as we will advance a little bit further. Uh, and give you guys the opportunity to see who will face in that final. Great overall performance from Jamie Shackleton. Came off the bench and did exactly what we needed him to. <sighs> I can't believe we did it. We are two... Two points clear at the top of the Premier League right now. Oh, Jesus. Can we win the league towards the end of today's episode as well? 3-0 up with a victory against Fulham. Someone suspended, though, as Emerson got sent off. Well done. £12 million added to the budget for next season, which obviously there's not going to be a next season. The next season we play it will be Season 1 at Cambridge United. I'm looking forward to putting that shirt on for a video. Spurs away. Oh, the gap is still two points with two games to go. Jesus Christ. We've got the FA Cup final to come against Manchester City as well yet. Oh, God. Maybe I'll do the FA Cup final and the Champions League final as a double upload again, maybe. I don't know whether you'd want to see that. It's Champions League only, really, this, isn't it? Let's keep it. It's Champions League only. Hakimi now gets himself sent off as we beat Spurs. And to the final day of the Premier League season we go, not knowing whether we'll win the Premier League or not. 
West Ham away on the final day of the Premier League season. We lead the table and we will let this one run. Keep an eye for Manchester City bottom right. Jaden Sancho gives us a 1-0 scoreline. City lead by a goal to nil against Chelsea. But West Ham have gone down to 10 men after just 16 minutes. Fatty makes it 2 Leeds United are going to be back-to-back -back Premier League champions at the end of this save. We're already back-to-back -back Carabao Cup champions as well. And we could end today's episode as back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back FA Cup winners too. Can we do it against City? They just beat Chelsea on the final day. They lost out in the title fight to me. We drew 0-0 with them last time I simmed a game against them, but we've gone 1-0 up here through Robert's early doors. Edison, Cancelo, Diop, Koulibaly, Angelino, Rodri, Donny van der Beek and Dominguez with Porro, Rodrigo and Neymar. Rodrigo's gone off for Palaversa. It's 2-0 through Wall and in the 49th minute we're going to win the FA Cup for the third straight season. Let's go! A treble. Can we make it four can we make it the quadruple we will find out in tomorrow's champions league final special i've already offered him a new contract i don't know why he keeps coming to me about it tomorrow's champions league final special will be against barcelona i will see you then